Hey, how are you? Robert, does it... When you get up in the morning, you pick up the newspaper, and you read about a new government program, uh, whether it's Head Start, whether it's Title I, whether, whatever it is, and you've done all this research, and you know the bigger the government, the more dependent people are, the less prosperous America becomes. It must drive you crazy. Well, it is very frustrating, but I'm frustrated even by simpler things. Uh, the column I put out was due to the fact that the Census Bureau came out with its annual poverty report, and this one's particularly notable because this is the 50th anniversary of Lyndon Johnson's War on Poverty. Since the War on Poverty started, we've spent $22 trillion on that war, which is three times the cost of all military wars in U.S. history. And yet the Robert, Census Bureau... Robert, Robert, let's let that number marinate a second here. Yeah. $22 trillion dollars that's t, t as in tyrannosaurus yes 22 yeah. trillion dollars absolutely the entire okay. the entire gdp of america is just 16 or 17 trillion that that's exactly right it is and and this year alone we spent 943 billion dollars on cash food housing and medical care for the poor that doesn't include social security and medicare it's the third biggest category of spending in government right behind education and Social Security and Medicare. But the, what the Census Bureau was coming, came out and said was, look, we've been doing this for 50 years, and guess what? The poverty rate today is exactly the same as when we started. And, and yet, despite the fact that we're spending five times as much money if you convert it into the cash as is needed to eliminate all poverty in the United States. Now, either the government is vastly more incompetent than even you or I would think, mm -hmm. okay, and I'm not a big fan of government, you know, or there's some kind of trick going on here, and what's going on is a trick on the taxpayer, because for 50 years, when the census counts the number of poor people, it measures your whether if you are poor if your income falls below certain thresholds, but guess what? When it counts income... That $943 billion in welfare spending, off the table, okay? And what that means is that these reports are completely nonsensical in terms of recording how people actually live. And if you actually look at other government data on how these so-called 50 million poor people live, what you find is that these people that are being identified as poor, 80% of them have air conditioning, two-thirds of them have cable TV, half of them have a computer in the home, 75% have got a car, a third of them have got two cars, 40% of them have got a widescreen HD TV. If you survey them, which the U.S. Department of Agriculture does, and says, were you hungry at any point for even one single day during the previous year, four out of five of them will say, no, I wasn't hungry at all. If you ask them about the kids, 96% of the kids not hungry for even a single day. You look at the kids' nutrient intakes, they're indistinguishable from the upper middle class and way above the recommended norm. So what you have here is a giant scam that the mass media feeds on that says, oh, look, at we have all these poor people and we have to spend more money. Well, in part, you have to spend more money because you didn't count all the money you spent in the first place. Now, does that mean the war on poverty was a success? No, because Lyndon Johnson, when he launched the war on poverty, said, I want welfare to go down. My goal is to make these people self-sufficient, to turn them from being tax eaters into tax payers. His own words, tax eaters into tax payers. I want less welfare, more people capable of supporting themselves. Wow. Absolute disaster. Exactly the opposite happened. Robert Rector is my guest. He's Senior Research Fellow in Domestic Policy at the Heritage Foundation. Robert, if we were to do a graph, it would show poverty declining, and then it would mm -hmm. show poverty flatlining from 1965 or so until the present. That's exactly right. Poverty from 1950 to, to the start of the war on poverty is cut in half, falling from about 35% down to 70%. Robert, Robert are, are you saying if Lyndon Johnson had done nothing, that poverty would continue to have gone down on its own? Y you it's a little bit more complicated than that because there are factors like wage growth mm -hmm. slowed down for reasons that were not caused by the government starting in 73. And you have to put that in and say, wow, that's bigger than anything we're talking about here. And no one knows exactly why that has happened. But on the other